Hello friends, what's up? So this is your friend, your mentor, your educator on this wonderful platform of Unacademy and you are watching me on Unacademy Need PG YouTube channel. All those who are new to this channel, let me tell you to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get the notifications. Today we will be dealing with another power pack session on anesthesia subject. In this we will be dealing with the anesthesia recall questions of FMG examinations of the year 2018 years. In our last session we have seen FMG 2017 questions. Today we will be seeing some questions from the year 2018 for the FMG recall. So let us begin with our today's session. Yes, I have got a teaching experience of more than five years. I am your educator on this wonderful platform of an academy teaching for the NEET PG category. And I have done my BA and DNB in anesthesiology and I am working as a consultant neuroanesthesiologist. And I have been teaching on the platform of an academy since its inception for the NEET PG category that is since October 2019. And where you can find me on the academy app, these are some of the links of my special class where you can find and go through this free live special classes that I have taken on the academy platform to actually go through some of the important quizzes, some important topics, some important last year recalls, previous year's questions, image based questions which we have taken which are free for you to actually go and check it out. So this is one of those links which you can check out on the Unacademy platform. Next guys, on the Unacademy platform, we are conducting daily quizzes yes, for the NEET PG 2022 who are targeting NEET PG 2022 examinations. We have got a quiz for you every day at 9 pm where you can attend the test live without even wasting your time. Yes, you will actually get the score live. You can go through that quiz, you can review the questions and yes, you will get the rank then and there itself. Also for the people who are attending NEET PG 2021 examination that is in the coming months, for them the quiz is there at 8 pm every day. Yes, both the quizzes are live and in both the live quizzes you get your rank instantaneously as soon as the quiz gets over. This is really interesting so that it keeps you motivated, it keeps you waiting for the entire day whatever you studied and it's like revising whatever you have read till now. Yes, how do you download? You download the Unacademy app from the Play Store or App Store on the iOS. Then once you have downloaded the app, go to the NEET PG category and in that NEET PG category you can get the plus courses, the free courses, all the possible courses that we have lined up for you on the Unacademy platform are visible in the NEET PG category. And if you want to subscribe to the platform for the NEET PG, you can use the course Dr. Hitesh-YT or Dr. Hitesh to get additional 10% discount. You can use it either for 6 months, 12 months or 18 months, whichever you are approval to. And yes, one of the best parts of subscribing to this iconic subscription that is the Unacademy plus the prep ladder which we have for you guys. Yes, you get the live benefits of Unacademy that is real time interaction as well as for the recorded sessions of the lecture you can go to the prep ladder plus you can get the live test and quizzes which are happening day in and day out every day on the academy platform on prep ladder you have got the rapid revision test and the question bank 2.0 so this is like the mixture of and the best of both the worlds that you can avoid so this is right now the best possible combination that you can get for your preparations for your need pd so let us begin with our first question for the FMG 2018 recall which is there on your screen right now. Fourth statement about post neural puncture headache that is PDPHAs. It is because of the breach of dura. The onset of headache is usually 12 to 72 hours after the procedure. Commonly occipito and frontal in location the headache type or the headache is relieved in sitting and standing position. So which among the following is the false statement regarding PDPH? PDPH as the name itself suggests it is because of the post dural puncture that means it is because of the puncture of the dura that means when you are giving subarachnoid block or spiral anesthesia or even when you are giving epidural and you accidentally tend to breach the dura yes that is when you get this post dural puncture headache yes. So automatically as the name itself says that it is post dural puncture that is puncture of dura. So breach of dura stands for it is a true statement. So obviously it is ruled out right. Coming to the next option 
that is onset of headache is usually 12 to 72 hours following the procedure is it a true statement or false statement yes after the breach of dura usually what happens the csf which is there it leaks out right for subarachnoid block you enter the subarachnoid space in a last session itself we have seen the different layers before you puncture before you go for the central neuroaxial block right so for subarachnoid block you cross the dura you breach the dura you enter into the subarachnoid space correct once you are there in the subarachnoid space that means you get the confirmatory sign of csf coming out into the hub of the needle that is where you deposit the drug so now the csf is leaking out from the dural puncture so once the csf leaks out from the dural puncture what happens the csf volume drops and there is traction of the meninges yes so it is because of this traction on the meninges you usually get the headache yes so whenever you are there in the sitting position or whenever you change your positions from supine to sitting from supine to sit standing from sitting to standing what happens because of this change of position there is because of the gravitational pull there is more traction on the dura so yes it increases because of the gravitational pull and because of change of position not decreases that is one thing second the onset is usually 12 to 72 hours of course this is a true statement but yes it can also be sometimes we have seen up to 7 days yes sometimes it can take up to 7 days for the onset of post dural puncture headache so you should not rule it out until and unless up to 7 days yes there can be onset that is known as delayed onset but yes most of the time that we get is usually 12 to 72 hours after the procedure is what we get the onset of headache and what is the type it is usually the frontal the patient will say i am getting a very bad headache up around my eyes that is on the frontal part and on the occipital region the patient usually starts complaining of headache that is how the headache usually starts so yes option b and option c both are true and just now i have mentioned you what are the signs and symptoms typical features that the headache is exaggerated by sitting or standing position it is not relieved in sitting and standing position it is relieved in supine or lying down position therefore we ask the patient to lie down flat we ask the patient not to change the positions yes that is how it is relieved so yes option d is a false statement so false statement regarding post dura puncture headache is option d yes moving on to the next question guys which of the following inhalational anesthetic agent is hepatotoxic options are sevoflurane isoflurane halothane or procaine yes if you if you just look at the options there are three options from the inhalational anesthetic agent and one is of the local anesthetic so automatically this option d procaine is ruled out yes what it is asking which of the following inhalational anesthetic agent yes even if you have not read anything even if you just know the names automatically you can rule out one option here yes now depending upon the three options which i left co iso and halothane we have discussed in detail in our lectures when we were studying about each and every individual property of anesthetic agents how is their metabolism what is their characteristic the physical properties and all those things yes now we have discussed that in the tabular form yes compare and contrast with each and every systems so here it is asking about what hepatotoxicity yes that means it is asking about the liver system the liver part yes so which of this following inhalational anesthetic agent gets metabolized one that you have to remember and after metabolism also which of these is hepatotoxic so these two things you should remember one thing very peculiar or if you just want to have a trick is remember h for h yes halothane starts with h so halothane causes what it has got a very peculiar effect on heart and also it has got a very peculiar effect on the hepatotoxicity yes so halothane h that is how you remember halothane h for heart and h for hepatotoxicity that is one easy trick to remember apart from that what happens when halothane is given 30% of halothane is metabolized whereas the other inhalational agents are metabolized to less than 3% or even less than 2% in some extents so hardly there is any metabolism for other inhalational anesthetic agents like sevoflurane isoflurane and desflurane they are hardly metabolized in the body but yes halothane it is metabolized up to 30% in the body and after the metabolism what does it lead to it leads to formation of trifluoroacetate or trifluoroacetic acid tfa that is the metabolite which is formed and this metabolite of halothane which is formed after the metabolism of halothane is hepatotoxic it this is not per se hepatotoxic but it leads to hepatotoxicity how by the 
autoimmune reaction. By autoimmune reaction, this leads to hepatotoxicity. So yes, H for H, H for heart, halothane has got the effect on heart, that is it is direct myocardial depressant, causes arrhythmogenic effects on heart, also H for H, that is hepatotoxicity, halothane H, hepatotoxicity H. So this is how you can remember with this little little tricks about a lot of questions when it comes to anesthesia as a subject. So yes, it is 30% metabolite, which leads to formation of TFA, that is trifluoroacetic acid which is a causes a autoimmune response in the body that means it generates the antibodies to this particular liver cells that is hepatocytes which leads to hepatitis and this halothane induced hepatitis or halothane induced hepatitis is categorized on two that is it can be either type 1 or type 2 hepatitis type 2 is usually self limiting autoimmune hepatitis because of halothane it is usually self limiting and gets cured in a month in the span of 3 to 6 weeks but when it leads to type 2 type 2 is what it is necrotizing hepatitis this is life threatening yes and there are various prodromal symptoms for this life threatening hepatitis there are various things which you should be assured of that you should avoid halothane why you should avoid halothane in particularly elderly females you should avoid halothane which are more prone for Hepatitis, right? In patients who have got increased or elevated liver enzymes. Yes, you should avoid using halothane in them. And also in patients who have received halothane in less than 3 months prior. Yes, prior exposure to halothane. Prior exposure to halothane. When was it? It was less than 3 months before, yes. So if the patient belongs to any of these 3 categories, you should be aware that these patients are more prone to develop hepatitis as a post-op complication of using halothane as an inhalational anesthetic agent. Moving on to the next question guys. During laryngoscopy, best method for checking whether the intubation is correct or not is, yes, capnography, auscultation, ultrasonography or chest movement. This is straightforward one line of questions when we studied about capnography or when we studied about steps of intubation, right? In both the cases, the confirmatory and the gold standard test, yes? The gold standard test or the gold standard investigation, the gold standard diagnosis to actually diagnose to identify whether your tube, endotracheal tube is in the trachea or it is somewhere else is what? How do you recognize that? With the help of capnography. Yes. Auscultation, ultrasonography, chest movements are additional methods. Yes. By the fogging of the tube, by the rising of the chest and coming down, the auscultation, whether you are getting to hear the chest sounds, auscultation sounds, respiratory breath sounds. These are all what? Additional tests which can help you in identifying that your tube is present in correct position. But the gold standard confirmatory test to diagnose whether your tube is in the trachea or not, it is by way of capnography. That is determining the ETCO2 graph, whether the ETCO2 graph is there or not, that is how you will have to know. How is the ETCO2 graph? It is usually this type of graph that you get to see. Yes. If it is in the esophagus, what type of graph you get to see? This is how slowly and gradually flattens out. There is no ETCO2 being detected whether if the tube is not in trachea. Yes, so if the tube is in trachea, you will get the capnograph that is doing shown in this figure. So, best method for checking whether the intubation is in correct position or not, by far one possible answer that is capnography. Moving on to the next question, guys. Shortest acting local anesthetic. Yes, shortest acting, longest acting. These are very frequently asked questions when it comes to any drug that you are using. Here it is shortest and longest acting local anesthetic. The options are procaine, cocaine, ibuprofene, and chloroprofene. So which among the following is the shortest acting local anesthetic? Remember, while we were discussing local anesthetics, in that we discussed about what? We discussed first structural classification. Then we discussed the classification based on duration. Yes. So structural is what? Amides and esters. Amides and Easters, yes, local anesthetists are classified like that. In amides, how do you classify them? Since amides have I in their spelling, any 
local anesthetic which have got two i's in their name they belongs to this amide category yes so here procaine crocaine and chloroprocaine they have got what one i in their name so they are esters that is dibucaine has got two i in its name so it is what it is an amide so amongst amides also dibucaine belongs to the topmost category that is most potent and longest acting so dibucaine is ruled out here regarding cocaine procaine and chloroprocaine cocaine belongs to what it belongs to intermediate potency and intermediate duration of action so cocaine is also ruled out we getting two local anesthetics which are now there in the option procaine and chloroprocaine they both are what they both are in the category of least potent and as well as yeah duration is also short so short duration of action amongst both the shortest acting is chloroprocaine yes the longer the spelling the shorter the duration of action that is how you can remember that is one mnemonic so yes procaine is ruled out chloroprocaine is the shortest acting and also the least potent local anesthetic agent that we have got yes one it is an ester second it is shortest acting and also least potent local anesthetic right so the correct option to this question is option d that is chloroprocaine i hope you enjoyed the second session of this fmg recall series we'll be coming up with another session of the fmg recall series till then stay tuned subscribe to our channel hit the bell icon and also download the an academy app to get some of the pre live sessions that we have taken on the platform till the time we meet again this is your mentor dr hitesh nazarin signing off see you guys bye bye